Let's talk uh, a lot more then about Donald Trump and that uh, arraignment that, of course, we've seen over the last few hours. We're going to talk about it in Global Grid and that international affairs commentator. Doug Herbert is joining us uh, once Morning, again. Here. So, good to see you, Doug. Um, we've all seen this arrangement. We've seen exactly what happened. There was another narrative as well, though, going on, wasn't there, over the last 12 hours? Yeah, you say another narrative. I'll use a different term. Alternate reality, because that's essentially what it was. Donald Trump, in a familiar sort of pattern, has always sought to turn the tables. He has cast himself as the victim, a uniquely persecuted individual uh, at the hands of an elitist, left-wing, Marxist, communist establishment out to get him. Just want to quickly show you sort of the narrative as framed in Trump land perfectly um, sort of reflected on Fox News Network. I put news in quotes when I say Fox. But this was the, I just want you to see the caption that they ran uh, during a split screen showing Trump's remarks last night and Joe Biden, who was also giving a speech at the White House at the same time. Fox News did a split screen and it said in the, in the caption, if you can't read it, wannabe dictator speaks at the White House after having his political rival arrested. You don't need to say any more. This sums up the narrative in Trump land. Uh, this turning the tables, Trump is the victim. He is not the one who is accused in a damning 37 count indictment of keeping classified documents, refusing to return them, defying a subpoena, orchestrating a cover, a cover up over these documents, encouraging his team and his liars to lie about these documents. None of that. This is not about the indictment. This is about out to get Trump. Uh, and this is a narrative we heard time and again yesterday. And Trump basically trying to push all this aside. So the alternate reality I'm talking about is, yes, while one thing was playing out in, in, in that Miami courthouse, this historic first ever federal indictment of criminal charges against a former president, uh, you also had a Trump who was holding a fundraiser yesterday, who was giving a, a speech at a fundraising event in Bedminster, New Jersey, later on in the day when he returned uh, back to New Jersey, uh, to an adoring crowd uh, on a patio deck decked out in, in, in flags, everyone waving Trump flags, stopping by a, an iconic Cuban-American restaurant in the Little Havana section of Miami, uh, to the adulation of a Latino in and Cuban community of his supporters, his fans. Uh, basically, nothing to see here. Carry on as if nothing is happening. For Trump, this is simply a backdrop that he is going to use, this indictment, uh, a colorful backdrop to enhance and boost his campaign and what he's already do it, doing, raising money. Doug, um, what about Republicans, this alternate reality you talk about? I mean, are they falling for it or are there cracks starting to appear? There are some cracks, uh, Stuart. You're absolutely right to point that out. But right now, the narrative is still a monolithic defense. Most, the vast majority of the Republican heavyweights are still defending Donald Trump, whether we're talking about his, the man seen as his primary challenger for the Republican nomination, Ron DeSantis, talking about the weaponization of, 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 the, uh, of the Justice Department. A lot of Republicans talking about what a sad day it is for America that Donald Trump is being subjected to this. Um, and, th and that's the narrative, basically. But there are outliers, one of them being another declared uh, man who's, who's vying for the Republican nomination, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. He gave an interview, I believe it was on Sunday on, uh, on U.S. television, which he said, if only half of the charges in the evidence laid out in this indictment are, is true, only half, Stuart, Donald Trump is toast. Those were his words. He called it a very, very damning indictment. Former Trump's former U.N. ambassador, Nikki Haley, also running for president. At first, she was very supportive of, Dr of Trump. She was talking about uh, a political vendetta, prosecutorial overreach, a, re a reference to the Justice Department there. Uh, but then, in more recent days, she's also talked about saying if this indictment, if the charges do bear out and are true, uh, it would show Trump being very reckless with the national security of America's actions, putting the security of America's military men and women at risk. That's Nikki Haley. Tim Scott, Republican from uh, South Carolina, also running for the Republican nomination, saying these are this is a serious case with serious allegations. And I will say not a Republican uh, nominee for president or candidate, but William Barr, the former attorney general, also saying this is an extremely damning indictment. He knows from whence he speaks. He used to defend Trump. He was Trump's main defender and has defended him in the past, most notably in the New York case at the Manhattan District Attorney back in March. This time he's not defending him and basically trying to, uh, but he's still a cry in the, in, in the wild here, trying to draw attention to the fact that these charges need to be read 
and they need to be taken seriously. So there are outliers in the Republican Party trying to draw attention to the seriousness of the allegations, Stuart, but the main narrative still, still is that the Republicans are circling the wagons around Trump and defending him. And let's not forget, it's not the only allegations. There are all sorts of other court uh, proceedings swirling around yeah. Donald Trump. It's, it's a little bit like that game of whack-a-mole, you know? You bang one down <laughs> and another one pops up. Uh, there are other charges in the pipeline. Like I said, Trump is going to try to make light of everything. He's going to make it all one big sort of, you know, campaign vehicle to raise money. But you're absolutely right in noting that in the pipeline right now, there are more investigations. Jack Smith is also investigating the, uh, the alleged role of Trump and his associates, his allies, in the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. Uh, the Georgia, uh, in, in the state of Georgia, there's an investigation underway into Donald Trump's alleged attempts to overturn the results of that election. Uh, in that swing state. Uh, there's obviously, we recently had the rape trial, uh, the, the, definite, the, the, the civil lawsuit in a rape trial where Trump was uh, accused of sexual uh, uh, abuse, not of rape. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of trials, not to mention, obviously, the district attorney uh, in Manhattan who's working on his uh, hush money payment scheme uh, to, a, to an adult film actress. Uh, and there's another one in New York State as well to try to ban uh, the Trump organization and his family from ever being able to do business again in that state. So it's, it's legal peril and legal jeopardy really wherever you look. But like I said, I come back to what I, I started saying. In Trump land, this is all afterthought. Trump is making light of it. He's trying to hold up another shiny object and make sure everyone is focusing on everything but his legal jeopardy. Doug, thanks very much. Doug Herbert with today's uh, Global Grid, our international affairs commentator. Thanks.